chemistry lab can be a safe, pleasant place to work if everyone follows a few basic safety rules. Reading the procedure prior to the start of lab can prevent accidents from occurring. We don't have many accidents in the lab, but you need to know what to do just in case. Pay close attention to these slides. You must make a hundred on the lab safety quiz that will be given in a few minutes before you are allowed to do any experiments. It is very important to wear safety goggles at all times in the chemistry lab. Even if you are finished with your experiment, your friend's experiment might splash up in your eyes. The goggles are available at the bookstore and at some large hardware stores. People who wear contact lenses should be especially careful about eye protection. Anything that gets in the eye will run under the contact lens and become concentrated there, creating a more hazardous situation than you would have without the contact lenses. These goggles are all acceptable for use in chemistry labs. They are indirectly vented, which means they won't fog up, but ventilation holes are covered. All of them are marked with the code Z87, showing that they meet the requirements of OSHA, the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration. These goggles and glasses are not good enough for chemistry labs. Even if they are marked Z87, they are meant for use with power tools or for some purpose other than chemistry. Safety glasses just aren't as safe as goggles, so they aren't allowed in our labs. Goggles with uncovered holes won't keep out acids or other hazardous chemicals that might splash in your eyes. If you get any chemical in your eyes, use the eye wash to flush it out with running water for 15 minutes. There is an automatic eye wash adjacent to the safety shower in each lab. To use the eye wash, lean over it, push down hard on the round metal handle, and little fountains of water will wash your eyes. You will probably need to hold your eyelids open with your fingers. You must wash your eyes for 15 minutes or more. If you spill a small amount of some chemical on your skin or clothing, wash it off with running water for at least three to five minutes or until the stinging sensation stops. If your skin still stings after it has been washed, you haven't washed long enough. Severe acid or base burns may be treated with a baking soda paste after the area has been washed thoroughly. By the way, some of the chemicals you'll be using this semester can eat holes in your clothes. It would be a good idea not to wear your best clothes to the lab or, if you do, wear a lab coat or an apron to protect your clothing. Use the safety shower to wash off large chemical spills such as a whole bottle of acid. Stand under the shower head, pull on the large metal handle, and streams of water will wash off whatever you spilled on yourself. The shower is designed so that the water continues to flow even after you let off of the handle so you can use your hands to wash thoroughly. The safety shower can also be used to extinguish flames if your clothes are on fire and you are near the safety shower. The fire blanket can also be used if your clothes are on fire. To use it, walk, don't run, to the fire blanket box that hangs on the wall. Grab hold of the rope handle that sticks out of the box, turn around two or three times, and the blanket will come out of the box and smother the flames. The best fire safety rule on the list says, don't catch yourself on fire in the first place. If you have long hair, tie it back or wear it up so it can't fall into the Bunsen burner flame. Avoid wearing long, loose sleeves, long flowing scarves, ties, or anything else that could get into the burner easily. In case of fire, you'd be better off wearing cotton or woolen clothes than synthetic fibers, since synthetic fibers melt into your skin as they burn. A small fire in a beaker or other small container can be extinguished by covering the beaker with a glass plate or some other piece of glass from your drawer. As soon as the air supply is cut off, the fire will go out. This rule works at home, too. If you have a grease fire in a pan, put a lid on it. Avoid fire by keeping flammable materials away from open flames. A larger fire, like you might have in a wastebasket, should be extinguished with a fire extinguisher. We have dry chemical extinguishers labeled ABC in all of our labs. Locate the fire extinguisher and gas cutoff valve in your lab before you leave today. Do not run from the lab. Use the fire extinguisher and have someone turn off the gas valve. To use the fire extinguisher, pull up on the black horn or nozzle. Before the fire extinguisher can be used, you must first pull out the pin to release the handle. Aim the nozzle at the base of the flames and squeeze the handle continuously. If a person's clothes are on fire, use the fire blanket or the safety shower to put out the flames. All emergency calls should be made to the TCC police at 8911. They will direct emergency services to your exact location. Each lab has several hoods or exhaust fans along one wall of the lab. The hoods are safety equipment that should be used to remove smelly, toxic, or flammable vapors from the room. If you are pregnant, please let your lab instructor know so that we can minimize your exposure to fumes. 
Tarrant County College is a non-smoking facility, so there is no smoking at any time, anywhere on campus. Many of the chemicals you will be working with this semester are more flammable than gasoline, so smoking is always a bad idea in any lab. There will be no food or drinks in the lab either. Once in a while, there might be enough toxic fumes in the lab to make you sick if the fumes were dissolved in a drink. You would definitely get sick if you ate food after accidentally laying it down in a puddle of acid on the lab bench. Feel free to take a food or drink break during the lab period, as long as you do it in the hall. Speaking of eating and drinking chemicals, please be very careful about what you pour down the drain or put in the wastebasket. If you don't want the chemical to end up in your drinking water, don't put it down the drain. Your teacher will tell you when certain substances need to be poured into waste containers. Those waste containers are found in the safety hoods. Some things are safe to pour down the drain, but other things aren't. Unused chemicals should never be returned to their original containers. The unused chemicals are treated as waste. You should never enter a chemistry lab barefooted or with open-toed shoes. There is broken glass on the floor most of the time because someone drops at least one test tube or beaker every lab period. If you break anything, please clean it up right away and dispose of broken glass in the proper container labeled specifically for broken glass, not the wastebasket. If you break a thermometer, tell your instructor so the mercury can be disposed of properly. You should contact the instructor for proper cleanup procedure in the event of a chemical spill. Never work in the lab alone. If you had an accident while working by yourself, it might take quite a while for someone to find you. We use the buddy system so that someone could go for help in case an accident happens. If you must leave the lab early, notify your instructor before class. Never perform unauthorized experiments. You don't know enough about chemistry at this stage of the game to come up with a procedure on your own that is guaranteed to be safe. Who knows what you might create? Once, a student of this program accidentally created cyanide gas while doing something that looked like fun. Luckily, she noticed that her mixture smelled funny. She took it to the hood before her unauthorized experiment gassed everyone in the lab. You should always stick to the procedure printed in the lab unless your instructor makes a specific change in the procedure. Often you will be required to heat your materials using a hot plate. Be cautious when handling the hot plate in any heated glassware. It is not obvious that the heating surface or glassware is hot. Avoid burns by allowing glassware and the burner to cool completely before handling. Always make sure the electric cord does not come into contact with the heating surface and the hot plate is turned off and unplugged when you leave. There will be no horseplay or running in the lab. Any violation of the student code of conduct will not be tolerated. Any accident, no matter how minor, should be reported to your lab instructor immediately. Your instructor can perform first aid, hand out band-aids if needed, and replace broken glassware. Sometimes an accident is due to an error in the procedure or a bad chemical. If you let your instructor know what happened to you, the error can be corrected before anyone else in the lab had the same accident. Whenever we buy a chemical, the manufacturer sends us a Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, with it. This one came with a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, or rubbing alcohol. The MSDS contains all kinds of information, including other names of the chemical, first aid treatment, toxicity data, storage instructions, fire hazard information, and exposure limits. In other words, the MSDS tells you everything you ever wanted to know about a chemical and a bunch of stuff you didn't really want to know. The MSDS uses a number from 0 to 3 to indicate how hazardous the chemical is. Rubbing alcohol has a health hazard of 1 because it's a skin irritant. The flammability is 2 out of a possible 3. It's pretty flammable. The reactivity is 1. Under personal protection, the MSDS will list things like goggles, gloves, and the hood. Remember that exposure to chemicals is a problem when you are exposed to high concentrations over a long period of time. It's much more dangerous to your instructor than it is to you. We will place a colored notebook containing the MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheet, for the current experiment in your lab each week. This concludes the presentation of the basic safety rules for the chemistry lab. As you've seen, most of the rules are really just common sense. Your chemistry lab will be perfectly safe if you and your friends use your heads. Now, put your notes away and get ready for the lab safety quiz.